Hey guys, just to let you know that this video is sponsored by Ant Keeping Depot. In today's video we're going to be taking a look around the Wakushi Leaf Cutter Founding Pod. So this is the first of a larger range of leaf cutter pods and accessories coming from Wakushi. But a founding pod is what you would start with. When you get your colony it will be around a golf ball size in the majority of cases. You would only need this one pod. This pod is designed to take them from the smallest size where you buy them up to needing a, an expansion. So then you would use the built-in expansion port to connect up a second pod and so on and so forth and even connect in some other size pods for specific purposes in the future. But a founding pod should last quite a while depending on your leaf cutter species just make sure you're aware of how fast they grow and you should be fine right here. So let's take it apart and let's see what we get. So we get a high accuracy Bluetooth temperature and humidity sensor. We get a flat lid with a center removable piece with the four vents. We get a screw and, and you get a little lid for the hydration port. The screw is going to attach the humidity sensor and its bracket through this little hole here to hold it so it hangs from the lid. So when you take the lid off this comes out with it and then it is really handy for access. So let's do a full setup on this. So I'm going to pull out the battery isolation tab and give it some power, bring it to life. Now. I'm going to just set this down and I'm going to switch over to my iPad so you can see the setup process. So what we're going to need is Mi Home and just download this app and then go to create account, select your country, make sure your international dialing code is entered correctly, pop in your mobile number. Just go through some anti-bot checks and wait for a text message. When you get your text message, just enter the number in, agree to the terms and accept and then you can set a password to your account. Once you've done that, you're in and just accept most of everything here as this is what allows it to find things in your network. I've gone to add device and it's immediately found one in my proximity. I've accepted the terms and now it's attempting to connect. Once an attempted connection has succeeded, it will start the connection or pairing process. This failed a few times for me until I realized I was too close. So, I moved it about a foot away and it accepted it quite readily. Then just name your your sensor. So I'm gonna set this as an ant room and then I'm gonna name the sensor Leaf Cutter Colony. I'm gonna set that and okay. This is up to you, but I ask it not to track me and accept. And there we go, we are connected to it and it's all set up. But there is a few more things we can do. So if you want to just tap in, it will load it up and then go to the three dots in the top right corner. In here go to automation, stay in custom and hit the plus icon. Then add more under if, then tap leaf cutter colony and then lower specified temperature, set the lowest temperature you would like your colony to be going to, then set another one and add when any condition is met, go back to leaf cutter colony, select lower than specified humidity and select a number that you want to be notified that you've dropped below. Once you've done that, ask it to send a notification under the then area to your device, name this automation and make sure it's switched on as it is here. That will message your phone if 
your outer parameters. Another cool thing is, you can go to additional settings, and from here, go to add to home screen, go to the share button, which is the square with the arrow leaving it in the top right, scroll down a bit, add to home, and hit add. This will add a cool little shortcut icon to your iOS device. From there, you can tap it and it'll immediately preload straight in, which is rather nice. So now let's attach the now set up temperature and humidity sensor to the lid. So we take out the quick removable lid and we're just going to pop the little screw through its intended hole. This is where we're going to just bring this in and use a little allen key to screw it on. That's a little bit fiddly, trying to have the camera and everything, so sorry about the janky sort of view here. Okay, so now we've got that nice and tight, make sure it's nice and level and the bracket isn't blocking any of the intake holes. And this is where you need to decide which way your outworld is going to face. Is it to the left or the right of your future expansions? Because the exit expansion port goes out one side. So if you want your exit port right, you need to make sure your lid is fixed on so the temperature gauge faces forwards. So I've decided it's going to come out of the left. So I've turned it around to the left and now I'm just clipping the lid on which is just add quite a little bit of pressure and you'll hear it snap in nice and securely and it's a real snug fit. And that's pretty much it. Let's get unwrapping it now. So let's peel away as much as you can without trying to get any fingerprints on it. This is where mine attacked me. <laughs> it sort of elasticated itself at my face. So that was a surprise. Okay, so here we go. So well, here's our expansion port. And this is what I was talking about. And he's got a little cap inside him until you need him. Then inside we've got a raised mesh. This keeps the fungus garden from coming into direct contact with the wet surface. This is really important and very useful. But mine's just a bit out of line from shipping. So I'm just going to line mine up with the expansion port. And there we go. That's how it should look. The raised mesh has a little exit point there. If a large leaf cutter enters, it can get out. There was a small piece of tube included with mine, so I'm just going to demonstrate the usage. I'm going to pop out the internal cap, and I can pluck that out later. And I'm just going to fit this in. This 24mm tube is quite a snug fit, and it does take a little bit of pressure to get it in. Once it's in, it creates a nice little seal. Just retrieve your little cap, and that is how you would connect it up to a, another pod next door, either directly or via a three-way connector. Now, if, you've, if we've done everything correctly so far, we will have your expansion port facing the way you want to expand, and it'll, you will be able to see the tube hitting an inner rim to make sure it's fully inserted. Let's talk a little bit about the hydration. So it's basically made up of a retention gypsum base. This is really good at holding the water in. And it has an easy top up that you don't actually need to go inside to do. And because of the way that this draws water through, a bit like a wicking effect, it actually can't overwater itself. Which means it does 
remove a lot of beginner mistakes. It's been a, this is really a nice little product, and if you're interested in leaf cutter colonies, this is a good option that's out there. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and in my next video, I'll be moving some ants into it. Thanks a lot.